Well guys, we're gonna review a computer today. We're gonna review uh, what's probably one of, if not the smallest pre-built system that you could actually buy. And here it is. Today's video is sponsored by MassDrop and the Sennheiser PC37X professional grade gaming headset. Sennheiser is known for its legendary sound quality and now you can have the best of both worlds without compromising mic quality, making it the perfect choice for gamers and professionals alike. The detachable 10 foot cable and 3.5 millimeter plugs ensure maximum compatibility while running your own amplifiers without taking up an additional USB slot. To learn more about the Sennheiser PC37Xs for MassDrop, click the link in the description below. So I don't know if the Pelican is a part of the actual retail shipping experience, but um, obviously they want the review unit to arrive intact. It's because what's in here, I think it's truly epic. So anyway, inside of here, what you're gonna find is a box in a box. I mean, we're always appreciative to have extra Pelican cases. Hey, that actually really is pretty small box in a box, isn't it? So obviously this is the Corsair One. We talked about this at CES and uh, we got a heads up that one was on the way for us to take a look at. Now, this is technically the second version of, like, it's like a V2, if you will, like a revision of the original Corsair One, which came out in 2018. In fact, Corsair reached out to me last year and was like, do you want to take a look at one? And I was kind of like, nah, not really. I mean, I, I did some ads for it and I thought it was a cool PC and all, but I just, I guess I underestimated how small it truly is because when I saw it at CES, I was like, wait a minute, you got all that in there? Yeah, I would love to take a look at it. So this is what they're dubbing their convection assisted cooling. What we talked about at CES is the fact that this basically has a single fan at the top that pulls in air through, see how it just keeps getting smaller? It's like one of those little Russian dolls. Like, now, I don't think I'm gonna do a full teardown because we took a look at this already at uh, CES with one that was opened up. And I don't wanna mess with anything prior to us getting kind of our testing numbers and stuff because what I really want today's video to sort of focus on is the thermals because that's the challenge with anything small form factor is the thermal capabilities of it. So what's happening here is you have two radiators on the side, one for the CPU, one for the GPU, and there's no fans on them at all. The only fan in here is actually on the top, which I don't even think is a 140 millimeter. I think it's kind of a proprietary size, but I could be wrong on that. That is pulling air up, which is getting convection assisted. So you have the transfer of heat moving through the rad and then being assisted by both the natural convection of heat and heat rises and all of that, plus the fan pulling heat through, or you know, the heat out of the case. So I'm really curious as to how one fan is gonna perform with uh, the limitation of both volume and just how crowded it is in there. There's not a lot of open space. I feel a mod incoming at some point. In terms of specs on this one, this is the Corsair i160. This is the 9900K with a 2080 Ti. The i140 has a 9700K with a RTX 2080. And then there's the Pro, which is coming out um, a little bit later this year, which has a silver case and that's gonna have an X299 micro ITX board or mini ITX board uh, built by ASRock that actually uses quad channel so dim memory. But what I wanna test today is the thermals on this because they gave some pretty aggressive um, figures in terms of what to expect temperature wise. I think we're expecting to see somewhere around 55C on the GPU. And I think we're looking at somewhere in the 70s or low 80s on the CPU. I'll have to double check that figure. These are pre-configured systems though. These are not bare bones. You can't buy them and put your own stuff in there because there's so much proprietary happening in here. And when it comes to the assembly, they figured like, look, these are, these are three SKUs we offer. Here are the specs of them. And that's the way that they are. So you can't pre-configure it. You can upgrade the CPU if you wanted. Like technically there's nothing to upgrade to with this is 9900K. But if you bought the 9700 version, you could upgrade it to a 9900K because it is just a drop-in CPU, nothing special there. So let's do this. Let's fire it up. Let's get uh, our software installed. Let's get some games in here. And then let's see what the temperatures are really like. Jay, can you move the computer like that way more? I can't see it. It's unbalanced. Uh oh. Yeah, we don't normally have the problem of computers being too small around here. There. Well, I don't think people realize just how small this computer is. I mean, Okay, that's the box for a 2080 Ti, to put it in, in perspective. That's in there somewhere, right? 
So we'll just leave that right there as a constant reminder. Does that put it in perspective? Just how small this chassis is? Okay, so we found out it has 32 gigabytes of Corsair memory in there, but that's their low profile um, DDR4. And uh, of course, power profile is all set to default. I was just checking that. It's set to balanced right now. It's not on you know, high performance or anything. It's just completely 100% out of the box settings. I've also got hardware monitor open here because I can check all things. Um, fans are at zero RPM. That's the first thing we noticed because if you look at the IQ software, this is how you control the Corsair One. There's two pumps, obviously. There's two separate loops in here. There's the GPU AIO and a CPU AIO. And you can see what the RPMs are there. Can't adjust the speed as far as I could tell. Our coolant temperatures, which is actually great to see because now we'll know exactly when our loops are saturated. If those temps stop going up, then we'll know, okay, it's fully saturated. No more having to guess based on the actual temperature of the die itself. The other thing you're gonna notice here is the fan by default. It's set to zero RPM because what we found, we've already done some testing on this, we're gonna demonstrate it. When the CPU coolant reaches about 42 C, that is when the fan starts to ramp up. It's a 1500 RPM fan and it hits max 1500 at approximately 46 C on the coolant temp and doesn't start to come on until 42. So that four degrees range, that four C range is from zero to max. Now you might think that's gonna be really jarring, right? The fan's just gonna kick on and just, and, and that amount of time and how long it takes the coolant to increase is actually not that long. It can take minutes to go from 42 to 46 C. I like OCCT for a couple reasons. One, it's free. You can go and download it right now. So if you wanna see how your temperatures and your loops or your air coolers or whatever compare to this, download it right now and follow along with your 9900K. Please don't use like an 8700K or a two, X299 platform or a Ryzen CPU to compare your temperatures. They're not directly comparable. So let's go and run this for 10 minutes and see how it does. Immediately, the temperature shot up to 71, 72, 60s and 70s on the core. It's gonna go all over the place based on the testing, but if you look at the CPU coolant, you can see the rate at which it climbs is really not that fast. It's at 35.9 C on the coolant. Okay, so we've been going for 11 minutes and 37 seconds. We know the loop has, has hit its max because, well, it's actually starting to come down slightly, but 46.8, 46.9, we've been sitting there now for several minutes without the coolant. Temperature's increasing. So if we look at our maxes over here, we're currently sitting in the 70s with only a few C delta. Um, 81 was the high, or 83 was the highest, and then down into the 70s and high 70s, low 80s. TJ Maxx on this is 105 C on the cores. So if uh, that tells us we've got anywhere between 20 to 25 C headroom on this, which is pretty amazing. And if you look at the current temps with the test still running, these are, these are much more indicative of what the real temps are, not those spikes. Um, but again, the coolant temperature has equalized. It's really kind of stopped going up. If anything, it started coming down slightly because that fan curve is now kind of waving like this because it's speeding up and slowing down a couple hundred RPM at the most. And these temperatures are 100%, in my opinion, um, within check. Now, the other thing to talk about though is the fact that we're only hitting 4.4, 4.3 in all core, and it bounces around 4, 5, 4, 6 on some. The five gigahertz, that's single core every now and then, so you can ignore the five gigs. This is, this is not indicative of what's happening with the CPU. This is. So if we look at this right here, let's go ahead and just take a random core. Let's look at, uh, oh, and the GPU loop. Yeah, you can see it came down in temperatures because the GPU loop is actually on a separate loop but it's controlled by the same fan. So as that fan ramped up, the coolant temps came down. So this is when the temps first came up when the fan was off. Once the fan turned on, you can see it came down and then equalized. And all the cores pretty much paint the same picture. This uh, very small independent loop for the 9900K in here is doing its job and maintaining the boost clocks that we were expecting to see. Because 4344 all core uh, boost clock or turbo clock is what we expect to see. Now let's do the exact same thing with the GPU. And we're, to do that, we're gonna be using superposition and 1080p extreme. A lot of people don't realize this, 1080p extreme is harder to run than 4K optimized. So we're gonna run this one um, until the temperature on the GPU stops going up. I can't run a windowed mode on this for some reason, and I don't want to uh, keep going back and forth because when you tab out, it acts weird, and then you get a weird overlay with windows. So we're gonna just let it go until the GPU temperature stop climbing, and then find what that number is. So it looks like we maxed out about 64C. Now this is gonna be just like the CPU where the um, 
<laughs> it takes time for that fan to react. It takes so long for this fan to speed up that uh, 64 seems to be about where it stopped it. Oh, look, we're starting to go back, back down to 63. Okay, so it's battling, 60 and 61 are having a fight to the death right now. It can't seem to go any lower, but it won't go any higher than 61. And we've been looping now for a while. So we're pretty sure we've hit that equilibrium. Here's what's weird about that. When we ran it earlier, it was 58C. The ambient temperature in the room right now is 20C, bouncing between 20 and 21. It hasn't changed. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go ahead and download another game and we are gonna see what happens in terms of uh, FPS at that, F FPS. So of course we're gonna check out Resident Evil 2, which is a very new title. Now all the settings too are pretty much set to um, pretty damn close to max. If you go to graphics, we're in a windowed 1440 mode, um, rendering modes normal, There's a lot of weird settings in this game, but our refresh rate is set to 60 because that's what the monitor is, but V-Sync is off and frame rate is variable, so we're not locking it. As you can see, we were getting 178 FPS in the game right now. 56 seems to be kind of where we're sort of balancing out. If we go in here and we actually set FPS uh, to limit with um, V-Sync, then you'll see we get a ridiculous amount of temperature drop. But as you can see, the GPU usage went from 99 all the way down to what, 50s? And because of that, the temp starts dropping and it actually rests approximately in the mid 40s when it comes to the game. Uh, we saw 40C actually at one point. And uh, there's a little lesson for you there on how V-Sync, if you turn it on, you can get a pretty significant reduction in temperatures and power usage. He's pointing in there, is that the cop or is that a worker? When someone just points into a dark room with scary noises, would you just go? Wow. Okay, well, temperatures are still about 54. So I would call that pretty freaking reasonable if you ask me, but I'm gonna go ahead and save this game for later because I want to enjoy it. So our CPU clock though during the game, as you can see, was pretty much locked at 4.7. That was on all core verified over here by hardware monitor. Clearly the CPU is not having any problems with temperatures in terms of gaming. Not that I would have expected it to. Okay, so the Corsair One i160. Um, it definitely performs as you would expect. It's a 9900K that gives you all the full functionality of it. It's not like some desktop version. It's got a full-sized NVIDIA reference 2080 Ti with a custom-built water block and custom-built water cooling loops. It's got a single 500 gigabyte NVMe drive, I think actually a 480, 480 gig NVMe drive and a two terabyte hard drive, as well as a you know, 600 watt SFX power supply. You've got your LPX RAM in there, all DD. It's all off the shelf stuff. What's really kind of custom about this, quite honestly, is the enclosure, the chassis that was built specifically for this. Temperatures, really not bad considering the form factor. We really fought hard to control the temperatures in our 9900K in that small uh, Ghost S1 build that we did. Phil will tell you, man, we pulled our hair out trying to get that all just dialed in. And this one's doing it perfectly fine out of the box with a single fan. It comes at a premium though, obviously. $3,600, 3,600 US dollars for this. It is definitely more expensive than the sum of its parts. A lot of people at this point would say, that's stupid, just build your own. To what that, I would say, and Corsair would actually agree, build your own. There's nothing against build your own. This obviously has its intended market. And if that price scares you away and you don't care about the form factor, then that's definitely not you. So that's where you guys basically sound off. If you think it's too expensive, it doesn't really change anything. They've got a more expensive one coming out at about $5,000, which is the i180 Pro, which we talked about at CES, which features a X299 mini ITX board that uses SODIM quad channel. Another thing I'm a little disappointed about is the fact that they went with a Z370 chipset rather than a Z390. There are some improvements to uh, wireless with Z390 and a couple of other key features with like Bluetooth and stuff like that, which you're actually missing out on. Whether you use it or not, the fact that you're paying this type of price, I feel like it's a feature that should have been included. I'm not sure why they went with the Z370 instead of an ITX Z390. I'm probably gonna also tear this apart and I might do another part. You guys tell me if you wanna see that, where I upgrade the fan to go with uh, more coolings. And I think I wanna change out that hard drive for a two terabyte SSD. I feel like for the price, they could have done that and still made money on the deal. So those are kind of my two or three complaints about the thing, but other than that, it uh, seems to live up to all the expectations they gave us at CES in terms of temperatures and performance. And I'm really, really curious to see how that X299 9920X 
fares in this form factor. All right, guys, sound off in the comments below. Thanks for hanging out with us while we took a look at this Corsair 1i160. Link in the description below if you guys wanna go and check it out. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next one.